والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Bismillah alhamdulillah and welcome to this episode of the beauties of Islam. I'm your host Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I want to talk about one of the beauties of Islam known as preservation meaning that the evidences and the proofs of Islam are preserved for us even today just as they were revealed 1400 years ago. 14 centuries ago, the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Arabian desert. Now, no matter how you look at it, this would be a strange thing to consider a man who could neither read nor write, who was coming up with something so amazing that even today, those who are students of knowledge and those who are appreciating the Arabia, the Lagota Arabia, language of the language of Arabic, they will say that this is something amazing. Amazing is this Quran. There is not a book like it. Nowhere in the Arabic language and in fact nowhere in any language on the earth today. The style, the structure, the beauty of the Quran is unmatched by any literature, by any poetry. And the beautiful part here is that it is all one hundred percent preserved not so much in the paper and ink as many people consider when they talk about books but rather even more emphatic it's preserved in the minds and in the hearts of all of the Muslims around the world I'd like to call your attention to something that when you think about this of all of the people in the world that are claiming Islam something to do with Muslim each and every one of them, regardless of their culture, their traditions, and their various opinions on social and political issues, still in all, the Qur'an is exactly the same verbatim, word for word, letter for letter, and dot for dot. In some of our programs, we've discussed this in more detail, but what I wanted to talk today is about the methodology of preservation. First of all, when the Qur'an came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what we find is that he himself, not being literate and unable really to read and write, had to hear, understand, memorize, and then convey this to his companions. And in such a way that they would also be able to understand, memorize, and pass it on then to generation after generation. In one of our programs, we discussed the game called Telephone. I'd like to repeat that for you, just to let you think about this. I don't know if you ever played this when you were a child or not, but it's where you take a group, maybe eight or ten individuals. You take one aside, and then you read something to him, maybe two or three paragraphs. And you ask him to listen closely, and then that person will take another person aside, and then they will begin to rehearse, it. and he will tell him those paragraphs that as much as he can remember, then that person will tell the next person who will then tell the next person and so on. Now imagine that this is going to happen in the same day, in the same time, in the same place with the same people who speak the same language and even have the same traditional uh, background and understandings, idioms of words and so on. Now imagine what will happen after those eight or ten people though hear and pass to the next person. And it's funny, that's why we call it a game, we enjoy doing it, because what started out talking about maybe space travel, going to the moon, ends up somebody talking about pizza and Pepsis. <laughs> but here now we're talking about something amazing, because more than 600 pages, here is the Quran right here, when you write it down on paper, kind of big, don't you think, that somebody could memorize all of this? in its entirety, all 600 pages? And not only that, the majority of the people memorizing the Quran today, they're not Arabs. In fact, since the time of Revelation until now, it was only in the very beginning that the people who recited it were Arabic speakers. Many Muslims, like myself, when they come into Islam, 
It's necessary for them to begin to learn what is Arabic, starting with the alif, ba, ta, and so on, and going through, then seeing how these letters come together, then forming the words and pronouncing some of these strange sounds like ain and rain and ha and ta. Many of the sounds that we find in the Arabic language are not necessarily in the English, and we have to kind of work at it. So considering that the sounds, the letters, and even the structure of the words themselves, I'm going to show you something. If you look at this, and probably you're not going to see it as close as I can, but the letters, instead of going from the left side of the page to the right side of the page, as we do in English and many other European languages, <laughs> they start on the right side of the page and go toward the left. By the way, when you're writing, it's a lot easier to do it that way, but that's another story. I'm just telling you that so is different here. You're going from the opposite side of the page. You've got brand new characters, letters. They're not even letters that you're familiar with. The shapes, the sounds. And yet, the Quran is memorized today by all of these people. Maybe 92%, roughly... 10% of the people memorizing the Quran are Arab speakers. All the rest of us were not Arabs. So how is it this book is being preserved so exact? And it's not just by writing it down. As a matter of fact, as we discussed in other programs, Quran is not really meaning a book in the sense that it's this book here, but rather the book that's with the law. And when it's recited, it's considered Quran, that which is being recited. <clears throat> Now, here's the beautiful thing. Each and every Muslim on the planet is using the Arabic throughout the day. Every day, what we're doing, how we're acting, we're actually using words from the Quran. Just now, when I picked this up, I said something in my heart. I said, Bismillah. It's pretty good. <laughs> and why? is because the Muslims say that before they begin anything. And that's the beginning words of the Quran in the name of Almighty Allah. Now what we'll do, we'll take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to show you more of the things that Muslims are using every day from the Quran in their daily lives and how easy the Quran is really to be preserved. Sit right there. We're going to be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your email. من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life we Would listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. <laughs> Bismillah, we're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. I was talking in the first part of this episode about how many things that the Muslims do every day using words from the Quran and how easy it is to preserve the Quran in our memory. One of the things that the Muslims are always doing when they greet each other is to say salam, salam alaikum. We find these words also in the Quran. It means peace be unto you. Another thing that we say is Masha'Allah, and we're actually taught in the Quran to say this, meaning because Allah wills. Another thing that we're taught to say is Insha'Allah, meaning that if Allah wills, if God's willing, and this is an expression I remember using many times, uh, even in English, as a Christian living in Texas, we used to say, if the Lord's willing, and exactly the meaning here is Insha'Allah. In fact, Allah tells us in the Quran that you should say this. Anytime you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, or so and so and so, you say, Insha'Allah. And we find, again, these are things in the Quran. 
helping us as non-Arab speakers even to be able to retain and preserve the message of the Quran. We say many times a day, Alhamdulillah. And these are the first words we find in the Quran. After Bismillah, Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All the praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Now, if you think about it, Muslims, if you ask them any question, look what they're going to say. They're going to say, Alhamdulillah. For instance, if you say, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Praise to Allah. If you say, how are things going? Alhamdulillah. How's your children? Alhamdulillah. And how's the work? Alhamdulillah. How's the life? Alhamdulillah. Everything? Alhamdulillah. Praise to Allah. And these are the first words of the Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Again, repeating how merciful and how gracious is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maliki Yomadin. Now, this part is the first thing we got that's a little different here. This is that Allah is the king on the day of judgment, He's the owner or the sovereign. On the day of judgment. Wow. And already we're halfway almost through the first chapter of the Quran. <laughs> because we're using this word so often it becomes simple and easy for small children even to begin to memorize the Quran. And before you know it they know all of Surah Fatiha. Then it's easy to learn another one called Inna Atenakul Kawthar. Surah Al Kawthar. This is only three little short verses but it helps and we begin and we're going from step to step to the next one and we'll learn والأسر. and then after that they'll learn after that and then the next chapter many a times we find children five six seven years old have memorized 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 chapters of the Quran, and they haven't even really attended any of the formal schools for learning Quran. And how about those that do? You might be amazed to find out that a child could spend one and a half years only studying the Quran, and they would have it all memorized entirely and be able to quote it to you all the way through front to back, cover to cover, without even looking at it once. Is this a miracle? I want you to think about it. In the beginning of the program, I gave you the example of the game called Telephone and how funny it is that we can't even communicate something from one person to another in the same room for only eight people, all living at the same time, speaking the same language. But how about when we're talking about Passing something down for 1,400 years from ear to mouth, mouth to ear. The majority of these people not speaking the Arabic language. The majority of them speaking so many different languages and learning the Arabic just for this purpose. So they will know the Quran. And then, to top it all off, today we have more than 10 million living human beings walking on the earth today who have the whole Quran in their hearts. And Allah tells us in the Quran that He will preserve this, this recitation, and He's done so. I have so much to tell you about more of the beauties of Islam. Use our website, beautiesofislam.com, to get more information about this. Till next time. Salam alaikum, peace be upon you. Islam is peace, Islam is peace.